Um, I'm Dr. Yusuf. I'll be presenting to you this uh, case, uh, interesting case of uh, congenital anterior portal cataract in addition to the senile uh, cortical and perceptive capsule cataract. Uh, this anterior portal cataract is stuck to uh, the anterior capsule and you find it that it's coming off actually when we do the uh, capsular rexus. Uh, it's it's not that difficult to remove it just that you you have to be cautious uh, with it when you do the capsule access to be included in the in the flap that you create the uh it shows you also that uh this kind of cataract when it's in the posterior capsule there is high chance of getting a posterior capsule tear when you remove it because actually the capsule is included in the cataract uh, just the routine routine steps here uh when I started the capsular axis, I tried to start a little bit further away from the uh, from the uh, uh, tear portal cataract and just include it in the flap. So uh, it's a just like going around it. And actually, the flap itself is being torn around that. If you notice that it's uh, going around, and then see it's coming off with the capsule. Okay, uh, the same would happen in the was the uh, the posterior capsule uh, cataract if you remove the cataract itself it can come off with a part of the capsule and you end up with the capsule tear uh, the rest of the steps of the procedure is uh, the same as any other case it's uh, you do the hydro section hydro delineation and nuclear rotation uh, we use the chopping technique uh, for all, all my cases so horizontal chopping This is a relatively soft cataract. It's not. Um, it's grade two cataract. Corticum uh, of capsule. You can see it's um, coming off really easy. It's not a difficult cataract at all. So we divide the nucleus into four quadrants, and each quadrant is divided into two when when it's actually time to remove it. This is the epinucleus, uh, completely gone. And what I created at the end here, you can see a defect on the uh, in the uh, cortical epine uh, epin uh, cortical material to allow the J cannula to go in easy. When you have that defect in the, the cortical material, you can easily wash the cortical material by putting the J cannula at this area, and uh, it makes our life much easier when, when, when you have that defect to uh, put the J cannula in and uh, irrigate, so it washes much better. J cannula is done, healing is injected, and uh, can implant the lens. Uh, my standard lens is uh, Technus ZA9003, the uh, the uh, wavefront guided uh, acrylic lens from Amo. You can see some cortical material still there, but I don't uh, follow those until uh, I plant the lens and then I'll do the irrigation aspiration after. It's much safer that way. I tend now to uh, leave all the uh, intraocular lenses in a vertical meridian. Uh, most of the time, except for the toric lenses. Uh, toric lenses, will, of course, will be depending on the axis of the stigmatism. But most of the cases, uh, regular cases, I implant the lens and just leave it at the vertical. It's uh, in the last ASCRS of 2009, they uh, said it's uh, better to leave it that way. It's uh, that's more stable. Okay, the case uh, is done. A case of anterior pole cataract. Okay, thank you for watching.